guys welcome to a new video on code tech tutorials today we're going to be looking at another way to do your c plus plus guis or interfaces or windowing and just kind of continuing the trend for a little bit longer today we're looking at cute creator yes it's pronounced cute not qt and as you can see here cute creator a cross-platform ide for application development so yes they have their own ide now you can use your own IDE, you don't have to use Qt Creator, but Qt Creator is really nice because it allows you to design your interface with a nice designer application that way uh, you can see what you're doing and see what things are going to look like before you hit your launch button. Now that being said, you don't have to use this, uh, it's like an XML markup, sort of like HTML in case you don't know, uh, that they use. And you don't have to use it you can put just c code right in there to tell it what to do as well and not use any markup language but i would highly recommend using the markup because i've tried both and i feel like using the xml was a little easier for scaling into larger forms but if you're just doing maybe small stuff and with some very basic things then just using the code and doing away with the forms might be fine as well if you download cute here and get the ide it's gonna it's going to prompt for you to go ahead and get the libraries and it's going to set up a lot of your stuff for you and you can see you can buy it this is often used for like just integrated stuff cars uh planes a lot of embedded stuff likes to use Qt, or a lot of companies use it rather and uh, this was one of the first ones i used when i was a new coder and i loved it so i'm pretty excited to get back into it so we're going to say we're an open source user if you're a big company and you're going to sell your software yes you need a proper license so that's something to know and here we go we're just going to download it and get it all set up and yeah so i'm going to show you how to do it with cute creator quick side point here we use our vc package manager and just do a search for cute all of the cute libraries well maybe not all but most of the important cute libraries you could just go download and use on your own without their id they are available there's cute base and there's a bunch of other ones so typically you want just the probably the base one or maybe this application framework and then there's a lot of extras for things you might want to do they have a lot of support here so it's cute is very well uh, fleshed out as far as how much it's being worked on and being designed so now that this download has finished what we're going to do here is just launch it and let it do its thing it's going to want us to log in i'm not sure if this is required or not so i'm going to play around with this a little bit but basically you've got to go through the install and get it all set up to use their ide all right so i did already have an account from a long time ago that i just used uh, so it does look like to use their ide you do need an account with them and i'm pretty sure you don't i feel like you don't absolutely need it i know i've installed Qt creator on linux and i don't remember signing in so maybe it's just a windows thing or this particular installer that i'm using feel free to uh, leave corrections in the comments if you know better so you do have to say that you're not using it for a company for the free version. So you gotta agree to those terms and it looks like we can just move forward and go through the setup. It's just gonna install a lot of components and libraries. So it is going to take a while uh, to go through all this, but we've installed Qt Create. Maybe we should read the readme. Let's go ahead and do that. Here it is. And we don't see a whole lot of details. They have a list of known issues in Design Studio and they have something called a Qt Bridge. Adobe Photoshop sketch. Okay, interesting. Well, we're going to launch Qt Creator. And when we launch it, this is the screen we get. Now, we do have the option to take a UI tour. I'd recommend doing that if you're not too familiar with things. But I've used this quite a few times, so I'm not really concerned. I know where to find things in general. But it's a pretty straightforward menu set up at the top some buttons on the side run buttons down here search and some more stuff down here for your piling and tests and whatnot so there are no examples here we could go grab some or we could review oh there's also user guides here blogs online community account get cute all right there's also marketplace there are tutorials these might be very nice once you get things set up if you're interested in going further and there are projects so you can manage new open we're going to do a new project and we have some options we get a widgets application which is uh you know some basic buttons and bars or we can do a console application so the widgets is going to give us a window 
console is probably not. You can use this without using the cute libraries. This editor is not too bad. I actually used it for quite a while. These are all templates, so you can go through them and try them out if you want. It's uh, just some starter stuff, but if you're doing any of these specific things in general, it wouldn't hurt to start with one of these and you can remove what you don't need and start editing. We are going to just do a widget application because I think that is the main use to show off. We have an option for build system. QMake is essentially their version of CMake. So it's got some special configurations. But if we want, we could just use CMake or QBS. We're going to stick with QMake for now and let them manage it. And now we have a starter class. Now this is, as it says here, the basic information about the classes you wish to gel generate skeleton source code files for. And it's the, you see by default it gives us main window with a base class of QT main window. We can change this to widget or dialog. A main window is going to give us what you would expect a window for this OS. And a widget I believe will too, but I think it's just a different starter setup. So let's do the main window. And we have the option to generate form. And this form is a .ui file. This is what it's going to pull everything from as far as the layout of your buttons and windows. So we can design that separately from the code. Translation file, we're not going to worry about this for now. And kits, this is where you select what you want to compile with. And now we see that we have no suitable kits. It looks like the most likely answer to our problem is that uh, Qt Creator wants you to use a compiler listed under one of their Qt libraries. Use the maintenance tool to install this. Excellent. All right, so we're gonna to go to the maintenance tool. Here it is, add or remove components. Under Qt, there's Qt 6.2.1. Your version may vary. This appears to be the latest one at the time of this recording, and it looks like it does specify some 64-bit MSVC, Ming GW, and some other stuff. So we're gonna grab that. Not going to worry about the older ones, we can go get them if we need to for backwards compatibility later, but I think that's all we're going to add here with the maintenance tool. This could have been done at install, but this is a nice lesson for in case you miss it, this is how you go back, you just got to use the maintenance tool. That is now finished. We have the option to restart or finish here. Restart only restarts this process. So we've added the new library, we can now launch. Cute creator again, and we should be able to now compile things. Very good. So it has some stuff at the bottom. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to go to new project, widgets, name doesn't matter for now. We just want to make sure it actually finds the kits, and now it does find some kits here. All right, and it looks like we've got one selected that'll work for desktop. I think it's actually the same as this. They probably point to the same thing, but yet let's use the cute one. There's also ARM, GW. No Android kits, okay, very good. So we're just gonna hit next here. No version control for now. And here we have all the pre-generated source files, including the form. So when you open up this form, this is where you get a UI layout and you can do what you want. So we're gonna just gonna put a button here in the center and you'll see what happens. We'll hit save. Uh, in the main window, in the main, in, well, let's start from the main. So you see it includes Q application and of course main window is our other file. The Q application is mainly what we need here. So instantiates a new one, instantiates a window, then it does show. Now this main window, if we look at it, it's got some cute stuff here. Uh, mainly a class called a main window that inherits from Q main window and uh, declares a Q object. I forget exactly how this is. It's just a macro. You can see it all there. It does some special behind the scenes stuff for Qt. And we have a main window that can take a parent on instantiation. And we have our UI set up here. So if we go to the CPP file, we will see that it's going to use this main window.ui. And I believe it just does that automatically based on its name. It's got UI underscore main window. So somehow this form's included. I'm not entirely sure how, but I think it's through this include you can just custom make them as well. Or here we go. It's on the untitled, or it's gonna be your project name dot pro. So this has your project set up. This is like all the details of your project. So that QMake, no 
knows how to handle things basically. And we see that it does, is listed as a form as well. And it's config for C++ 11. We're just gonna hit play. This should just work out of the box with a default case here. And there we go, we got our push button. Of course our push button isn't hooked up to any functions or anything. And that's what you're kinda gonna need to know next. The designer has its own side of things and the hooking these up with code has a side of things. But this designer is super nice. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. You get properties for any button you click on over here for special settings. And all of these settings, everything you can do in this designer, you can also do with C++ code. So you don't necessarily have to use this designer or this UI file. And also you can make changes to these on the fly with your C++ code. And you can just have their default setup in the UI, if that makes sense. So yeah, you can have the default setup in the UI and then you can use the code later in your project as logic happens to change UI elements. That's a little more advanced. I don't think we're gonna quite get that far, but just letting you know the possibilities. So if you wanna see a tutorial on cute designer stuff and best practices, I could do that, but I'm not going to do that in this video because it would just uh, be a big sidetrack, but I uh, highly encourage you play around with it if you're curious. Let's put some stuff up here. One. And now let's hit play. Save all. You can see oh, down here it tells you the build status. There we go. Now we have file and about up here. And uh, push button. Alright. So where do you go from here? Now this is where you decide. What am I trying to do? What kind of app am I building? And you kind of go from here, basically. And you can make more of these windows if you need to. And you can do all sorts of stuff with them. So really from here, it's up to you how much documentation you want to go look at, how many cute tutorials you want to look at, and really what you want to build. At this point, it is also like, it's just C++ knowledge. You're going to run into a lot of C++ concepts you're managing this stuff. All right, well, I hope this helped. Uh, you get started with Cute Creator. This is available on all OSs, so you can make some nice cross-platform GUIs and work on it in different OSs. You just have to set up that kits and compilers with whatever you're working with and pick one that's working for your OS, but the code should be all the same, and that's one of the beauties of this library. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I want to take a moment to say thanks to all of you. There's a lot of you out there who show me a lot of thanks and gratitude, especially in the comments. And I really appreciate that. Like more than you know, some days it does help me keep going. Because uh, like you, I am also uh, living through the human experience, you, would, you could say. And to those of you that go further beyond... I really appreciate it too, the people on Patreon, the people that have joined. Um, I only have one tier, and it is uh, basically three bucks, so if you would like to support me by buying me a coffee or a tea or a beer every month, you can sign up on Patreon and do so, or hit the join button on YouTube, and that would mean a ton to me as well. These productions do take a lot of time, especially to keep going, and come up with new stuff and all the editing so it really does make a huge difference for me continuing to grow here and make this a viable stable thing for me so I really appreciate you guys and I'll be uh, I'll be out there also we have a discord going where you can talk about anything code related pretty much and we have a small community of coders that is growing so would love it if you would like to join or join uh, you can tell I feel really awkward giving these sort of talks but I do mean it and I should say it more often so I'm gonna at least try to slip it in here like once a month and uh, see if we can get some more people in the community doing stuff because at some point we're gonna be doing some awesome things who knows what we might have some uh, little code competitions or something at some point. But uh, yeah, all things computer science pretty much going to be on this channel going forward since that is my main interest. All right. I appreciate you guys. See you next episode. Peace.